Okay. All right, so hello, museum families, and welcome to RBC Marathon Kids, a play date through screens across British Columbia and the world. My name, uh, the previous sessions are recorded and you can find them on our Royal BC Museum YouTube page. My name is Chris O'Connor and I'm a learning program developer here at the Royal BC Museum. The museum and my home is a, on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Songhees and Esquimalt nation, nations um, here in Victoria on Vancouver Island. I'm an uninvited guest on the territory and grateful to live, learn and raise a family on this land. And today is Pink Shirt Day, um, where kids and educators, school staff around the country are wearing pink to try to root out bullying of all kinds, schools and really all learning spaces. So museums and libraries as well um, should be, need to be safe spaces for everyone. Pink Shirt Day started in Nova Scotia by a group of teen boys who wore pink as a support for a boy who wore pink and got bullied. Um, so we can say that this day is both about feeling comfortable about expressing yourself however you like um, and the importance of allyship to have each other's back and stand up for each other. Unfortunately, I don't have a pink shirt. I have to go like buy one or two or three um, later, but I did make a pink button. Um, it's also uh, the last week of Black History Month but I hope that once we're in March, we continue to lift up and celebrate the stories, heritage and culture of the black community here in BC and around the world. And we're also uh, in the middle of Freedom to Read Week. So today I'm happy to have our friends from the Greater Victoria Public Library, Devin and Caitlin. The museum and library have a long ongoing partnership and we love the opportunity, or I, I'll speak for myself. I love the opportunity to be able to hang out with um, my friends, the librarians uh, at the Greater Victoria Public Library. So welcome, Devin and Caitlin. Thanks for having us. <laughs> so We're excited to be here. Yeah, so you're both with the Greater Victoria Public Library, but you work in different branches. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what you do first and, and what you do within the library? Sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, like you say, um, Devin and I are both public services librarians. Um, and that means that we work at a branch and we get to do all kinds of really fun things that you expect us to do in the library. We get to help with um, doing story times and doing programs for families and reaching out that way. Um, I work at the Centennial branch, so over by per Perks Arena. And um, that means that I get to connect with all sorts of families who are out here. And then Devin and I also get to spend lots of time because of some of the other fun stuff we get to do working with folks like Chris over at the museum. And we get to do lots of other art programs and things like that around the city too, which is really fun. Great. Devin, and I'm, yeah. oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm normally working out of the central branch of the, library, but today I am on location at our Slang One Tamu James Bay branch. So okay. just down the road from Chris. Yeah, just that way. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And we, we have families joining in from all over uh, BC and sometimes beyond BC. So just think about your own library, wherever you are. Um, is it such an important part of all communities uh, is the public library. So. So today we're gonna to do a, something called draw and tell, and I'm really excited about this. So what you'll need, everyone out there, families out there, you just need paper and um, something to draw with. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that correct, Devin and Caitlin? Yes. All right, can we get into that? Sure. So I'm going to get to tell the first story today. Um, and so I'm just gonna rearrange my camera here. And my first story is called The Ghost on Peterson's Farm. So this is a story about a boy named Dave. I've got my big piece of paper here. I've got a dry erase marker, but you can use whatever you've got at home to draw along with, or you can just watch and enjoy seeing the story illustrate itself as we go. So you're saying, Caitlin, that people can draw along they with- They can. Okay. Yes. Great. All right. So, 
Dave liked to visit his grandfather in the summers. His grandfather lived in a big old house in the countryside and Dave's favorite thing to do was wander around exploring the big old house and the, and the surrounding farms and areas because he was completely convinced that there was treasure hidden somewhere nearby. One morning, he went into his grandfather's study and he looked up high on a shelf, way up high, and saw a very interesting book he'd never seen before. He climbed up on the chair and he pulled down the interesting looking book and a big piece of paper fell out of the book. This is the piece of paper. Right there. He was sure he knew what it was. He knew it was a treasure map. He could tell it was a treasure map because when he looked really closely, he could see right here, there was Platypus Creek cutting right through the middle. Oh, sorry, my story's stuck. Down here in the corner was Turtle Lake. You could tell it was Turtle Lake because of this funny little sticky outy butts that kind of looked like legs. And over up here was Growling Dingo Mountain, which kind of looked like a dog if you had a good enough imagination. Now, right down here, there was a big X that marked Old Man Peterson's farm. <gasps> Old Man Peterson had been dead for a very long time and Dave was sure there was some really great treasure over, over there somewhere. So that night, he grabbed some supplies. He picked up his favorite digging shovel. He had it ready to go. Off he went, sneaking out just as the sun was setting over to old man Peterson's farm. Where should I start first, he thought to himself. Hmm, I know, I'll start by the barn. So up he went to the barn. He went up to the barn and he started to dig and dig and dig and he was digging a big giant hole right by the barn. He was digging so fast and so deep when all of a sudden he heard, Ooh. what's that? Dave said, looking around, very nervous now. But everything was quiet. He listened for a few more seconds and then he thought, Oh, it must have just been my imagination. I'll just keep going. So he continued to dig and dig and dig. Ooh, I heard it again. It's definitely the ghost of old man Peterson. Oh, I have to go get a stick to protect myself. And he ran over and grabbed a stick off the ground. He grabbed that stick and he shook it. And he said, don't you come near me, old man Peterson. Don't you come near me. He listened hard and then it was pretty quiet and he thought, I, th I think he's gone away now, but I'll just go back to digging. But just to be safe, he went over to the other side of the barn and started a new hole over there. He was digging away, digging and digging and digging and digging and ooh. <gasps> Dave was pretty nervous. And just then the moon started coming out from behind some clouds. Now in the moonlight, Dave was sure he could see a ghost walking back and forth and back and forth. Ooh. Ah, said Dave. Ah. He ran all the way down to the end of the barn, went into the tool shed and peeped out through a little knot hole. He could see the ghost going back and forth and back and forth moaning. Ooh. Dave stayed hidden in the tool shed for quite a while until it went quiet. He waited a little bit longer. Then he mustered all of his courage and started to creep out of the door. And then just as he started going, ooh, so he ran all the way back inside and spent the rest of the night peeping out another knot hole. He waited and waited and waited, and finally the sun came up. It was going to be a beautiful sunny day. And Dave was pretty excited about that. He ran all the way back to his grandfather's house, throwing the stick down as he ran away. But if Dave had been a little bit less scared, 
and had paused for just a minute, he would have seen what was really the ghost of Peterson Farm. Can you see what that is? It's a cow. <laughs> <laughs> so it was probably saying moo instead of ooh, right? <laughs> and that yeah. is the end. <laughs> that was so great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Caitlin. Right. I'm going to pause my video for a second, and Devin has another story to share. Sure do. So I'm going to just arrange my paper a little bit more here. My story is called Banana Cream Pie. And the picture that we're going to draw with this story is actually going to be of one of the characters. So this story starts like many good stories start on the top of a nice big hill. There's the hill there. And on that hill lived two friends, Sam and Lou. And they lived in a house over here, like this. And there's the door there. Now, Sam and Lou, they loved getting up super early when the sun was just coming up over their hill like this. A nice, gorgeous, sunny day, just like today here. Lots of sun rays. It's getting warmer so bright and Sam and Lou they got up early just like they normally do but this morning Lou turned to Sam and he said Sam you know what we should do today we should bake we should bake one of our favorite pies a banana cream pie and Sam said yes Lou of course I love baking so they went to the pantry they went to the fridge and they got all the supplies out and Lou was measuring very carefully because pie pastry can be difficult to make. And all of a sudden he heard a crack splat and he turned around just in time to see two eggs hit the ground and splatter everywhere to meet with the other one that he'd heard. And he turned to Sam and he said, Sam, what happened to the eggs? And Sam said, oh no, I was trying to learn to juggle with the eggs, but I accidentally dropped them. And then as Sam ran to the sink to get a cloth, he tripped over a giant blank bag of flour and covered the whole kitchen in flour. And Lou said, wait, 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 Sam. How about if you go get cleaned up, I'll clean up the kitchen. And then you can go outside and play in the glorious sunshine and I'll call you in when the pie is finished baking. And Sam said, I think that's a really good idea. So then Lou went ahead and baked and Sam went outside and he played in the sun until he heard Lou saying, Sam, the pie is ready. And Sam went running into the house because he loves pie. And between Sam and Lou, they ate half of the pie. And there's the other half that's left. Ooh. And then they were holding their stomachs. They were so full. And then Lou turned to Sam again and he said, Sam, you know who would love this pie? Our friend Megan. And Megan just lived on the other side of the hill right here. There's her house and there's her door. So they gathered the pie and they walked over to Megan's house and they knocked, knocked, knocked on her door and they said, Megan, we have a surprise for you. But Megan didn't answer. So they knocked, knocked, knocked again and Megan's door swung open. So they decided to go and check and see if she was inside. She likes to sleep a little later than they do. They went inside the house, but Megan was nowhere to be seen. So Lou said, you know what, Sam? I know where Megan is. If she's not in her house, she's gonna be down the hill at the pond right there. So how about Sam, if you stay here at Megan's house 
and I'll go down the hill and find Megan, and then I'll bring her back and we'll all have some pie. They thought that was a great idea. So Lou headed down the hill and he walked all the way around the pond saying, Megan, we have a surprise for you. But she wasn't anywhere around the pond. And Lou thought to himself, if she's not at home and she's not at the pond, I bet she's over here at the playground. And so he walked all the way across the park and he walked all the way around the playground saying, Megan, we have a surprise for you. And when he got to the other side of the playground, he found Megan and he said, Megan, 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 guess what? We have a great surprise for you. And Megan said, oh my goodness, I love surprises. So they ran around the playground and across the park and around the pond and back up the hill. And when they got to Megan's house, Sam wasn't there. And you know what else wasn't there? The pie, only the pie plate was left. Sam had nibble, 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 nibbled it all up. And all that was left were four tiny crumbs. These are the crumbs right here. And Lou said, oh my goodness, Megan, your surprise is ruined. And she said, what, what was the surprise? And Lou said, it was a banana cream pie, but Sam must have eaten the other half of it. And Megan said, that's okay, Lou, because you know what I love doing more than anything? I love baking so we can make another pie. And the moral to this story is, Never leave your monkey friend alone with your banana cream pie. The end. Yay. <laughs> All right. Oh, I love I love both of those stories. And it was it was it was so fun that there was there were surprises about the story, like built into the story, but then also the surprises just around the story too and the surprise at the end with both. That was so wonderful. Thank you so much, you two. Thank you. One thing that I really love about a draw and tell is that as you're telling the story, you can embellish it. Like I added that Sam was juggling. He could have been doing other things with those eggs. He could have been rolling them. He could have knocked over the milk instead of eggs. Um, you can also change the name of the characters. So I used some of my friends' names in that story. Ah, so you're thinking about your friends and having pie with them? Yes, <laughs> and how much they love baking. And with Caitlin, I really felt like as you were reading that you were that character and you were hiding, looking up through that mm -hmm. hole. Um, so, so the surprise of the character was, a, and our surprise seeing that it was a cow all along, um, was was really light. It's a pretty tricky one. <laughs> but that would be pretty scary, even if you knew it was a cow and you were out in the night. Cows are oh, big. Oh, <laughs> I would I'm curious if there's anyone out in the Zoom room or on Facebook Live um, that guessed that it was a cow before Caitlin turned it to its side. Because as you were doing it, I was thinking, oh, I it, like, I see that Caitlin's like putting marks in particular places, but I didn't see the cow until you turned it. Um, Chloe says, nope, <laughs> so Chloe didn't see. That makes yeah. me so happy that it was a surprise because this is one of my favorites. So I've told it a lot of times and oh, yeah. I can't help but see the cow anymore. Right, right. So it's really nice to hear that it is a surprise if you don't already know the story. Yeah, no, I, I definitely didn't see it until you <laughs> And even that, they even took it to you actually turning it. And then like Devin with the, the monkey too, I was like, oh, is that gonna be a, like a tadpole or a, a frog? And, and then it was a monkey. So thank you so much for the two of you for, for um, doing that. And, and it's also, it is freedom to read um, too. So um, I know you, you both wanted to talk about that. As well. Yes, we did. 
So Freedom to Read Week is a really big deal in libraries and we celebrate it all across Canada. Um, and this is our week to celebrate that um, we are allowed to read whatever we want and we can share our ideas and our opinions without having um, being censored. And we're really, really lucky in Canada to have that right. And that is uh, one of our fundamental freedoms that is um, protected under our Charter of Rights and Freedoms and here in Canada. And we're really lucky because there are so many places in the world that don't have that right, um, whose governments um, limit what they can see and read and say. So we really like to celebrate Freedom to Read Week um, in libraries because libraries are all about um, access to information and reading and being free from censorship. Those are like our core, core values we hold really dear. So um, um, for especially for, for that might not understand that word censorship. What, is, what so, does that mean? So censorship is someone um, not allowing you to either read something or see something or read or see something in its entirety. So they might edit parts out um, and they do that for a really uh, a wide variety of reasons. Um, most of the time it's because something in it upsets them or it's something they disagree with. And it's not always something that they're not trying to do it to be mean. Um, they're really trying to protect the people that they're, they're holding that information back from or that they think they're protecting that person. But that's really not the case because what, what might be, what might make me feel uncomfortable or I might disagree with is not what Chris would disagree with and it wouldn't make Caitlin uncomfortable. So it's not fair for me to decide what they should be able to access and read and see, just like they shouldn't be able to decide what I can access and read and see. And so that's what we really celebrate this week. And there are lots of books all across the library that have been um, challenged throughout the years. And um, I think some people, I don't know if anyone out in the chat um, has a favorite book that they know has been banned or challenged in a library, but I brought three examples of some of my favorite books. So um, you might be surprised to hear that Harry Potter has been challenged in a lot of libraries. It's one of the most challenged books um, because some people feel that it promotes violence and witchcraft. Another book that has been challenged and people have tried to censor many, many times in libraries is the Captain Underpants series because it has some potty humor in it. And a picture book that people might be surprised has been challenged a lot is the Paper Bag Princess classic. Um, because there is some violence and because it is anti-family, they feel, because the princess chooses not to end up with the prince in the end. That's so, the best, yeah. That's the best part, though. I know, <laughs> that is the best part. Um, so, and that's why, like, Chris and I love that. So, it would be so sad if someone else said, no, you can't have that in the library because I don't like that message. And so that's why libraries really try and, and fight censorship and allow the whole community to access um, everything that we can possibly give to them. Um, Caitlin, Chris, do you have a favorite um, challenged or banned book? I have a lot of favorite challenged or banned books. Um, most of my favorites were, were challenged because of some of the same things as Harry Potter. I really like a lot of fantasy books and stories like that. And lots of times there are challenges because people think that just because you read those stories about fantastical worlds that they think it's promoting witchcraft and people, you know, trying to put spells on each other in the real world. And so two of my favorites um, for that are the whole His Dark Materials series by Philip Pullman has been 
um, challenged lots of times. The first book for that is The Golden Compass. And those are some of my favorite books of all time. Um, and this is a, a pretty old book, but um, Bruce Colville still writes lots of really great stories. But my favorite um, that I know has been challenged for that is called Jeremy Thatcher Dragon Hatcher, because I really love just stories about dragons. And that's a really nice story. And it kind of goes with Pink Shirt Day, because it's a story about a uh, boy getting bullied and he ends up um, finding a dragon egg through some story circumstances and he raises the dragon and and people thought that that was promoting witchcraft and violence and I think that's too bad because I think it's a really nice story about a boy learning to stand up for himself and and making new friends and being able to do all sorts of things yeah and I have, a, I have a couple books. Um, actually, one that I, I saw on the Freedom to Read uh, website was featured is um, from an author who joined us in October for RBCM at Home Kids, uh, Robin Stevenson, who has a book, uh, many books, but one of the books, Kid Activists, um, mm -hmm. was challenged in, in Chicago, in uh, Illinois, when uh, Robin was going, oh, there it is. <laughs> when Robin was going to, to um, do a, a tour and talk with kids at a school. Um, a couple of others uh, for me that Entango makes three mm -hmm. uh, about um, from Justin Richardson and Peter Parnell. It's about two male penguins raising a baby penguin together in a zoo, um, which is a lovely book. Um, so that's more a sort of younger ages, um, more like youth and adult. Uh, Persepolis, Marjane Satrapi, uh, is a fantastic book and it was one of the challenged books. And also one of my favorite authors, Bell Hooks, Black Looks, Race and Representation, more for adults, um, mm -hmm. is also challenged too. Um, so those three books, in addition to Robin Stevenson's Kid Activist books are are, um, and also my kid is a, is 16, just turned 16 at Vic High. Um, and they're about to read uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, which is also on the list, so. Yeah, Tango Makes Three is really interesting because that's a real, that's a true story. Mm-hmm, right. And so, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so as you're reading this week out there, um, just think about what that, what that means to read, to be able to make choices in terms of what you read, to really honor the authors that are, have the courage to write um, from their heart about what they believe is um, important to say. And even if there's something that doesn't, you, you don't agree with and honoring the fact that um, creating space for, for others to read and hear uh, that as well. So mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for what you're doing at the library, Devin and Caitlin, um, to bring forward the Freedom to Read Week and throughout the year, what you do to just bring books books alive and a good community space, spaces of libraries to bring people together. Um, so, so thank you so much for joining uh, us today. Um, we will end the program now. So we'll we'll stop our we just stop.